It's a new season at the Muni. We'll talk it over with executive producer Mike Isaacson. That's next on City Corner. Potter and welcome to City Corner. Well, everybody loves spring and one reason is because it's a new season for the Muni. We'd like to welcome executive producer Mike Isaacson. Mike, welcome to the program. It's great to be back. And it's nice having you here for the Muni because for years you've come on uh, previewing uh, seasons at the Fox Theater. I did. Which you were affiliated That's with. That's when you had your old set. Yes. But now we have this incredible... I know that threw you off ever since you came in with the different furniture. Well, the fire. The fire. I'm loving the fire in April. It's all illusion, just like the theater, Mike. But we know you from years you came on to talk about the Fox. Yes. Because you were with, uh, and still are, with Fox Theatrical. So you yes. came on with me for years to talk about the new seasons of the Fox. Mm -hmm. What are you still doing with them, by the way? Uh, Fox Theatricals is all the Broadway producing. Uh -huh. So uh, we produced two shows this season in New York, uh, a play and a musical. Well, congratulations. I guess this would be your second season at the Muni? Second season at the Muni, yes. Taking over for Paul Blake, which is yeah. a name that people remember for I don't know how long he was there. Sure. He was there, I think, 22 years. Yeah, that's amazing. So how's it been for you, this new challenge? Um, it's been great. It's definitely been a challenge. Uh, <clears throat> last year was um, incredibly exciting. Um, you know, things I thought would surprise me didn't and then there were surprises I didn't see coming which was you know anything you'd expect in that kind of transition but you know I um, I asked everybody there the amazing musicians and artists to sort of look at things differently and let's try some new ways and I'm very fortunate because they all embraced it and what was incredibly exciting was the audience was with us mm -hmm. um, real sense of energy in the theater when people were excited about our new looks and kind of just everything we all brought to the table in a new way and it was a real exciting place to be last summer. Well, you know it's tough to follow uh, somebody's footsteps that's been there a long time because mm -hmm. if you're the new guy you're gonna you know you're gonna do some things a little differently and right. that's always a challenge I guess in a right. way. But you've gotten some good reviews. I, I mean you personally from like critics that have written about uh, right. your season last year changes you made right. seemed to go over very well. I mean it was yes um, and we're very you know and that's a I mean yes it was certainly um, things were written about me because everyone was sort of watching it but you know I mean w as a producer you're only as good as the talent you hire and we had amazing directors and, and choreographers and casts and designers and everybody really came together in um, a different kind of spirit. I mean, you know, it just, because of what it is, certain things of a personality end up on the stage. I mean, certain things about Paul just sort of ended up there and things about, you know, sort of what I wanted this audience to experience ended up there and um, it, it was very fortunate. They were really, really receptive and so I'm honored by that. You talk about, you know, playing to the audience. Boy, you have a big audience to play to. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you've got 10,000 people a night, um, which, is, which is its own fascinating di dynamic because the thing you don't realize about, well, we sort of take for granted about the Muni. I mean, the core of the Muni, one of the, its tenets is it's a civic institution. It's the idea that we as St. Louisans are better as a city, are better people by coming together and experiencing this together. And that is, that is there every night. And it's sort of this undertow that is so um, really magnificent and unlike anything in the country or the world, really. I mean, when you look at, you know, one of the ways I can get the talent caliber I want is talking to them about the, the theater and what it is. And, you know, it's truly the most democratic theater in the country. When you look at who's in the boxes, and we go all the way up to the, you know, terrace seat and the free seats, everybody's there, everybody feels welcome, and everybody um, has a stake in this. And there's really not a theater like that. And so that's an incredible power to play with in, in terms of what you're producing and how you're sort of talking about that. 
-hmm. within a show, and it's also kind of an overwhelming responsibility sometimes. Mm. Well, before we go any further, uh, since the new season is just about upon us, why don't we preview that season? Great. And I know we have some uh, show logos that are going to come up, and why don't you preview the season for us? Oh, we're going down the list. Okay, we've got, we've got Monty Python Spamalot. We're going to open that. Um, this musical won the Tony Award for Best Musical about five years ago. It's based on uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Hilarious, really fun show. And uh, just today we announced that uh, John O'Hurley, who was on Seinfeld for all those years, Jay Peterman, uh, who actually I was a part of the Broadway production of Spamalot, and he played Arthur on Broadway. He's going to come to St. Louis and play the part at the Muni. Oh, great. And he is hysterical. It's going to be really, really funny. Okay. So, After Spamalot? After Spamalot, you're going to show me the cue here, and we're going to say it's Shrek the Musical. <laughs> and this is great. For those people who were here last year, um, we did a production of Aladdin, and the guy who played the genie, John Tartaglia, who's an amazing, amazing talent, he's a puppeteer and also a director, he was in the Broadway cast of Shrek, and he's going to direct this production. And we're coming up with a whole new sort of physical vocabulary for the characters. And we have an incredibly exciting cast we're going to announce in a couple weeks coming. And, you know, Shrek is fascinating because it's sort of the anti fairy tale. And the, it, the idea of Shrek, both in the original book and in at least the initial film, was sort of looking at what do stories tell us and what do we believe and, you know, our ogre is always ugly and, you know, and it's very interesting when you contrast what's going on in Shrek as compared to sort of the classic Disney stuff. Um, and the thing about Shrek too is it's also got a really great sense of humor about itself, so the adults love it. So, are ogres always ugly? I guess you got to come find out. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. You knew that. that. I mean, really, I mean, you, you lob that up? Seriously? <laughs> that was a given. What was I going to say? No? Yes. <laughs> and the third show of the season? Nonsense Muni style. This is fantastic. Here's the goal. 40 tap dancing nuns, right? Okay, so that makes you smile. Uh, nonsense, this is the 30th year of the original Nonsense, and Dan Goggin, who wrote the original and all the um, variations, and there have been this international success, has adapted it for the Muni, and we're calling it Nonsense Muni style. And the Little Sisters of Hoboken have come to the Muni to do their benefit, and they need the Muni audience's help in raising the money for the Dear Dead Sisters. And uh, it's going to be hilarious, very fun. Now, Whoopi Goldberg, of course, did the movie, but uh, and I watched. No, the... that's Sister Act, not Nonsense. Oh, Sister Act. Then yeah. never mind. What I was going to say makes no sense. I'm, I'm helping you out here, okay. Steve. <laughs> I'm catching you. I'm your net. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Mike. <laughs> Okay, so that was the third show. Fourth yeah. show, uh, there are f five shows in a season, right? There's seven. I'm here for like you. Like I said, there are seven <laughs> shows in a season. Uh, the fifth show is the, the Pulitzer Prize winning classic musical South Pacific. Um, Rodgers and Hammerstein at their finest. You know, really, when you, look, when you look at musicals, they're not written to last for the ages. They really aren't. They are tended to be of their time. Really? I well, never thought about it that way. Well, think about it about opera. In their day, there were tens of thousands of operas written and how many last for the ages? 20? I mean, they're written for a time, and, and that's fine. That is as it's intended to be. But as, we're, as we've gone through the last century, we're sort of seeing which ones still resonate, and South Pacific does, mm -hmm. because it asks some really powerful questions about, you know, stranger in a strange land, what, what we bring to the table in terms of relating to other people who are different from us. And right. it's, in, in the, you know, some enchanted evening, incredible, incredible score. So, that, that's our fifth show. I'm sorry, that's the fourth show. The fifth show, let me help you out here, Steve, is Les Miserables. Which this is, is, uh, it's all in your hands now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you, I'm just rolling here. Okay, got it. <laughs> uh, Les Miserables, which is really exciting to be doing this coming right after the movie. Because the movie took a definite take on, on the piece. And if you really looked at it, the music was kind of secondary. It was sort of this, and don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed the movie. I thought they did an incredible job with parts of it. But we're going to sort of do Les Miserables classic, and we are going to sing it like you've never heard it sung before, and do it in sort of that grand manner on the Muni stage. So um, very excited about that. And, and, you know, that score is just, that music is just simply beautiful. You just can't. And we've got our full Muni orchestra, 26 pieces. Mm. So that's going to be great. Then, sort of in contrast to Shrek in a way, we've got Mary Poppins which just closed down Broadway, right. and the Muni is one of the first theaters in the country to do it. And, um, you know, it is that classic old school musical that you can bring the kids to and real family friendly. And it's very interesting because, you know, the film came out in the early 60s, and really, 
you know, when you went to see the show in New York, there was actually a lot of hair like yours and mine in the audience. I don't it, know what you mean. You short? Know, yeah, 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 short hair. But a lot of gray hair because that character resonated with the childhood of the boomer generation, mm -hmm. really. Um, and now there, it was grandparents bringing their grandkids to sort of discover this incredible character. Yeah. And then we're ending with, um, we end the season with, again, one of the all-time greats, West Side Story. Um, wow. yeah. So, and, you know, that choreography is some of the greatest ever created in, you know, Broadway history, and now it's even being done by ballet companies. Where does it mean to stand on your philosophy about bringing in a well-known names? I know that you do now. And I know when I was growing up, there was always like someone quote unquote famous. Right. And didn't it go through a period, and this was before your time, didn't it go through a period where they didn't do that, and now they're starting to do that again? Well, they would be me. <laughs> 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 Let's be real clear about that. Um, <laughs> Well, last year we had, for example, we had Jennifer Holliday right. and um, Leslie Uggams. I announced John O'Hurley, so I believe that that is a name. And there's a couple of the names we haven't announced yet. You know, here's the thing. That, that, that thing that people associate with the history of the Muni with stars, the 60s and 70s, which you had, here's what you had. You had all these people who were unemployed by MGM by the middle early 60s, and then they kind of, they toured and did theater. Right. Those people are no longer with us. Right. You don't have those people who are sort of raised. So, and television has changed because you had a lot of sitcom stars. Well, television is now reality TV. So I'm all for stars if I feel they can actually do the part. Right. Yeah, you know, very clearly if you have somebody who's up there just because they're a name, but they're not good, that's kind of painful. Right. So that's really how I call it. I have to tell you, last, uh, last season was exciting. I uh, had Jennifer Holliday on my radio uh, program and had a chance to go over and to her, her hotel and interview her there, and that was a, it was a real thrill to meet her, and I know the audience loved her. Yeah, yeah, no, that was a real powerful week. It was an incredible week for us, and she just gave really historic performance. And there's something about when you can get an iconic performance on that stage, it feels even bigger. Absolutely. We can take a break. Uh, Mike Isaacson, the executive producer of The Muni, is with us today, and we'll be back with more City Corner right after this. My name's CJ. A few years ago, my father became seriously ill. I did what I could do before he passed, but it took its toll. I lost my job, my house. I'm getting back on my feet, but I don't know when there'll be food on the table. How'd I do, CJ? We could be twins. Well, cousins, maybe. <laughs> Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back, holla back, holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What'd you dream about? Something me? I did. Are you on your way to the mall? Lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. Potter, welcome back to City Corner. Mike Isaacson is the exec 
Isaac Sun is the executive producer of the Muni. He's here. He's laughing at everything I say. Not because I'm funny. Not everything. I'm concerned about ending up on that's not cool .com, though. If they show my picture, that's, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> We're celebrating Mike's second season of the Muni and the Muni's 95th season, which is pretty darn incredible. You know, that is extraordinary. Um, I think we're the uh, second longest running theater in the country. There's the Walnut Street in Philadelphia, which is like 200 seats, ironically. Um, but, 200? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's compared to 10,000. Compared to 10,000, yeah. Plus 1,500 free seats yeah. on top of that. Well, people often ask, you know, because you know, we run each of our shows for seven performances, and they say, why have so few? But when you do the math, that's like running four weeks in any other theater. You know what I'm so curious about? And, um, you know, people always talk about the weather, you being outside, and we have some exciting fan news. And I mean the kind of fan that turns. Yeah. Uh, that we'll get to in just a second. I always thought the thing about the weather with immunity is sort of what made it neat. That there's a little adventure there. Yes. No, no, that, you know, when you talk about lessons learned in the first season, you know, I've been studying the work for years and dreaming and looking at what I wanted to do, but, but the open air and the trees and the night and the sky and the moon, it allows you um, a poetry that you cannot get inside. And part of my conversations with all the directors is literally we begin with, you know, at 8.15, the, the sun's up. But, you know, depending where we're on the season, by 8.30, 35, 40, we've all kind of gone into the darkness together. And everything sort of emerges. And that gives you such an incredible um, power for, for the audience. And then, like for last year, we opened with Thoroughly Modern Millie. And, which was a show I would produce in New York. In the second act, there's this lovely pas de deux between the, the love, the heroine Millie and Jimmy. And it takes place on a ledge outside an office building. And you know, on Broadway, it was beautiful, only this big thing. But at the Muni, with this, okay, big ledge. But you know, you had the open air and the trees were lit. And as these two were dancing, like this gentle breeze, and it just, it, 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 uh, the irony is the elements allow you, if you get it right, to make it feel even more intimate, mm -hmm. to make it even feel more present. So that's actually a, 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 um, something I really relish. It's, it's nobody else can do that. Now, of course, in the summer, it can get very warm and humid, and we're used to the fans that come on during intermission. Right. But you have something new, something that I think is really exciting this year. What are we yeah. looking at here? Yeah. Um, well, that, what I think we're looking for, is a picture of the old fans, but it's in, if I can see it correctly on my glasses, it's in sort of the position. The, the great, there we go. These are our new fans that'll be in for this season, which are a real game changer in a 95 year history because these fans will be able to run silently during the performance should we need them. That's gonna make a huge difference. It's gonna make a huge difference. Um, we're thrilled for our audience. Um, and I'm so grateful because so many amazing donors and board members stepped up to get this done for the audience um, because this happened fast. We found out about the technology about a year ago. This is the first time it's been done in an outdoor environment. This is real cutting edge stuff. The Muni's the first, literally in the world to do this. Uh -huh. And we've done this whole series of tests and they're gonna be installed by the first show. And it basically uses the same technology of like a shark or a whale fin in the way it cuts the air. So it's absolutely silent. One other thing I wanna ask you about weather-wise I've always been curious about is what about like rain or thunderstorms? I mean, you got a lot riding on every show. If you've got 10,000 people in the audience, you know, you've got, you've got a limited amount of window to perform a show. Wonder if there's a monsoon for four days. Couldn't that just destroy you? Or do you have really good insurance or what? Uh, there is actually no insurance uh, because the payment wouldn't be worth the liability. But yeah, it is a huge risk factor. Fortunately, in the history of the Muni, there's actually been very few rainouts. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, um, so, but they are, um, sh should that scenario happen? Yeah, it would be very, very difficult for us. And fortunately, hasn't happened, which is why, you know, we, um, you know, if you get there and it's lightly drizzling, we delay the show. Right. You know, the show will go on. And there are some legendary stories of the show finishing at three in the morning and all of that, which people have stayed for. It just sort of happens every once in a while. Well, last season was your first season at the Mini, so we have a little recap of last season. Okay. So this is sort of a look back at Mike's last year. <laughs> 
and uh, all the actors and talented people, of course, at the meeting. Why don't we take a look at that right now? When the winds from the east and the suns from the west and the sand in the glass is right, come on down, come on in, let the magic begin. It's another Arabian night. Mr. Aladdin, sir, have a wish or two on me. Come on, the job. You big name, Bob. You ain't never had a friend, never had a friend. You ain't never had a friend, never had a friend. You ain't never, never had a, had a friend. Had a friend. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Crystal Room is proud to present the club debut of America's new recording stars, The Dream. That, of course, was last season at the Muni, Mike, and that was your first season there, and um, it had a lot of critical acclaim, but you must have learned a lot of things, too. Did anything surprise you about your first season? Yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, a lot. Um, I think the, um, the thing that surprised me <clears throat> most was that, um, again, it's all in the world the way the audience relates to it and what they're seeing and how they um, feel about it. And there is a stake that they have in the Muni that's um, unlike, I, I, I don't have the language for it, but what, here's what I knew. I knew that when we succeeded on the stage, however the audience defined it, they felt <clears throat> better about themselves, about St. Louis, about uh, something that we all participate in. It's kind of like a sports team. Mm -hmm. When a sports team wins, everyone feels better. They don't even understand why. This, that uh, is very much uh, part of the Muni experience, and that's incredible. How much do you know about who your audience is? I mean, with 10,000 seats a night, there's got to be a lot of people from out of town. There's people from out of town. It's all walks of life, and that's, you know, that's actually... Um, what's great but makes it harder because you do you do have to sort of it's one of the last vestiges of shooting towards the middle so everyone feels welcome 
And I actually love that. If you look what's happened to TV, it's all, everything's all divided up. Right. But here's a place where everybody has to come. My favorite, one of my favorite moments, because throughout the season I would go sit in the audience and study the work and study the audience and sort of just get my head around it. And I just remember the king and I, which is actually a little emotional watching that because our king, Kevin Gray, actually suddenly died six weeks ago. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, I, watching that was very moving. Um, but, you know, I met the king and I, and there's a couple in their 70s watching it, holding hands, and they're sitting next to a couple in their 20s with the piercings and the tattoos, holding hands, watching it. And um, it speaks to the power of the show, but it really speaks to the power of the Muni, and um, that's amazing. Well, theater, that's a great thing about theater, uh, and the Muni exemplifies that, uh, bringing people together yeah. from all walks of life. Yeah. Everybody that has a different story. Right. She. Uh, and how much are you responsible for the shows that we see? Well, my title is executive producer, so at the end of the day, the sort of the buck stops here. Uh, so I'm, I'm very responsible, but I'm not, you know, the thing about the theater is everybody's dependent on everybody else. Right. You know, so I hire all the directors and choreographers and very involved with, the, and the designers and involved with the casting. But, you know, uh, my job is to encourage them to create amazing right. work and what do they need? And some people need a lot of involvement and some people right. are like, let me go and do my thing. Mike, let's take a look at uh, the shows for the due season, which is Great. just about to open again. If you wouldn't mind recapping that for us. We, we open with Monty Python's Spamalot, which is hilarious and funny and a sort of great date night show. Um, prepare to laugh. Our second show is Shrek the Musical, which is great for kids and families and kind of another great date night. And the, the, the music in Shrek is going to surprise you. Great music. Third one is a real, we're going off the rails here with Nonsense Muni style. Um, very, very funny adaptation of that classic show uh, that people love. Um, great music and great night out. We have fourth show is Rodgers and Hammerstein, South Pacific. It's won the Pulitzer, uh, one of the all-time great classic musicals. So if you've got kids, you can bring them to Shrek or Mary Poppins, but you also got to bring them to South Pacific. That's the rule. Uh, the fifth show is Les Miserables, you know, arguably one of the most popular musicals in the world in the last 20, 25 years with that incredible score that we're just going to sing to the rafters. Mary Poppins, Muni premiere, first time on our stage, uh, which had just closed on Broadway. Uh, incredibly fun and exciting in that classic story of a family. And then we ended with West Side Story. Well, we look forward to it. Uh, ticket information, way to get tickets. We'll come up in just a minute. Mike Isaacson, it's always fun to talk to you. And we'll look forward to seeing you and everybody else at the Muni. Great. Thanks for the fire. You're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> it's all yours. I'm Steve Potter. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. See you at the Muni. Bye-bye.